and we're back into it guys what a morning absolutely beautiful still a slight bit of swell rolling through but um, there's zero wind and there shouldn't be all day so plan is to uh, head out just for a bit of a half day dive, um, I want to get one more kingfish um, to, to stock up for the, the weeks ahead, months ahead, um, as they do become more scarce and I might look for some crays, grab a few crays, then I've got crays, snapper and kingy and um, happy days but hey we'll just go out for a look anyways and um, have a search around these islands for the, for the morning, um, been out here once before so pretty excited to explore some new ground once again. Coffee's brewing get a good coffee into me and uh, and we're on I'm on the instant today being a bit lazy didn't bring the little espresso machine next time Right guys, um, just getting the wetsuit on, <sighs> sticking with the 3mm, probably the last dive in it for the year. Um, so we'll just get this soaked up, this is what I use currently, it's a um, seaweed based lubricant, so all natural. Um, if you out there are using um, shampoo and body wash and stuff, it's um, probably not the best to be you know, sitting in that soapy solution for hours at a time, especially if you dive. Um, as much as I do so um, get something natural if you can um, and definitely do not use dishwashing liquid if you are please stop that's going to be really harsh on your skin and it's just full of chemicals and shit so that's just a case you can mix it up in a bottle don't need much it's very very luby get some water in there warm water if you can in, in winter help you out and then you just gotta get this old wetsuit good old shake up Mix it all around. So I had um, a chat with a, a local guy here at the uh, campsite last night and I was 
walking around trying to give my fish away um, to people and share it around but he'd already already done the done the deed so anyways got chatting and uh, he said where are you heading tomorrow what do you want and I said oh look just a kingy and made some craze and uh, he says yeah all the hot spots the main spots um, as like usual where people go uh, that's not where the kingies are and um, they're actually in the channels and the um, kind of reefs closer in um, where all the bait fish are hanging and whatnot so I'm gonna take his advice um, cruise out to one of his spots here um, it's one of those things sometimes I, I do well often I don't do well with people's advice but hey we'll give it a crack it's early in the morning and um, see what we can find eh tides pushing in we've got another about an hour and a half of incoming tides so it should be firing out there fingers crossed guys I've, um, I've boosted out around these islands and I found this nice little channel here with this what looks to be rock breaking just just above the under the surface this is full tide almost um, should hump up here just ahead here it comes now there we go um, I'm just gonna anchor off to the side here there, there it is breaking right there um, so it should be a good reef just under me. Um, my little GPS on my phone is not working right now, so we'll um, anchor up and go for a swim, mate. Let's do it. Well guys, I jumped in at that spot and had a swim around the channel and around this reef that's breaking and it's just not happening, not firing, there's no bait fish. Um, it's just a bit dead. Um, bait fish are hanging a bit low. There's not much current at all. It's, I feel like I may have missed that high tide. Maybe the um, it was a bit off on, maybe my um, readings online were, were a bit off, but yeah, it's, it's bugger all current though. I'm going to have a search around, um, try and find some workups um, and jump in on that. And if it's just not happening, um, yeah, we'll just go straight in for some craze. I do have that one kingy, so it's not the end of the world. So, um, and they tend to show up all, all spots, you know, they can, they can just turn up anywhere. So we'll move on, eh? Well, guys, we're at the new spot and um, I can see a heap of fish all under the boat and and the surface of the lies a bit further. Just not sure what that current's doing. Um, I really wanna just cover some ground. So as it's a new spot, I just don't know the pressure points. So yeah, I'm gonna connect to the boat once again and we're just gonna do some drift dives. Um, I find that very successful if you're by yourself and um, yeah, and there's a bit of current and, and stuff pushing. So let's do it. It was quite a strange area, currents pushing in different directions, one area like this, green, gloomy, then I swam 10 metres the other way and it would change into clear blue water, here big schools of blue mau mau and sweet, beautiful sight, but I was after a kingfish. A good tip for hunting kingfish is to dive down, whether it be 3 or 5 metres, sometimes less, sometimes more to get to where the water clarity changes 
from often clear on top to more greeny down below and that's where the kingfish generally hunt they use that nice dark green color on their back to blend in so if you can get down to their level they'll feel more at ease more inquisitive and they'll come in for a look When out diving, I like to just take in scenes like this. It's such an awesome sight. It's not all about killing fish. Just as much above land, cruising around island groups like this. Beautiful scenes, big hole in the rock here, very cool. Well, I just got to a new spot and the surface is just alive with blue Mau Mau. Should be able to put the camera underwater and see them. Such beautiful fish. Um, they're usually a reasonably good sign, so I'm going to jump in here and have a look. I hunted this spot for a while. Current had stopped pushing and it was just blue Mau Mau mingling around. Nothing else at all apart from a few juvenile trevally. Well guys, I've just seen an epic little cove here and um, I'm on my way to a reef which I've dove once years ago and, and got a good kingfish about 20 kg so anyways I've just seen this little cove here and it looks quite crayfishy so we'll, we'll give it a crack eh? You gotta explore new spots, follow that instinct. So I'll try and uh, nudge right up in here and, and anchor up in the shallows. Hopefully um, it rocks ahead. <laughs> Well, righto guys, we're parked up in this beautiful, beautiful little cove here. Um, it's good to be out of that swell, it was picking up, the wind was picking up a bit. Um, yeah, just coming from that direction, so nice and sheltered here. It was just getting a bit rough out there, uncomfortable. And there was no sign of kingfish coming in, no baitfish like kuhiru or very few kahawai. So, this feels good. Let's go and uh, get in and try find some bugs, some crayfish. I'm here in this cove, it's clean, clear water and I'm diving down underneath boulders and rocks checking for crayfish. Here under this one you can see a scorpion fish just sitting there, quite a pale coloured one. I don't want to shoot my spear gun into the rock below, bending the shaft, so I just stab it in the head. Straight through the brain, pretty stoked. Easy kill shot and a beautiful eating fish, otherwise known as poor man's crayfish. Beautiful eating. All right, right into the brain, perfect. <laughs> These are just beautiful eating fish. Poor man's crayfish, they call them. Very similar taste, uh, interesting texture, but just beautiful. Got to be careful of their spines, quite poisonous. So we'll go get them on the boat now and. Yeah, what a score! Woo! -hoo! Beautiful fish. Don't get these uh, as much down south of, say, Whangarei. They seem to be all up north of New Zealand. Beautiful. They're usually vibrant red. Um, when they come out of the water, it looks like this guy's. Uh, been molting potentially, it's quite a pale colour. Fat belly, see what this thing's been eating, eh? Ugh. 
I spot another scorpion fish down here below, eating the guts of his friend. I just come in for a closer look, try to get some footage. One's enough. See how they blend into the rock. Awesome, awesome camouflage. There's a nice big stingray parked up down below. Generally once they're parked up on the bottom, it's in between tides. They'll be more active on the high tides, moving around trying to get a feed when the current's pushing. So yeah, generally not the best time to be spearing. Not always the case, but anyways, here I am just hunting under every boulder, every rock, trying to find some crayfish. It's the only way in new spots, you've just got to search. Another huge stingray parked up, they seem to be all over the place. A nice sight when they're nice and calm like this. They still give me the shivers sometimes when they get those barbs up. I spot a friendly wrasse below so I decide to give it a feed of kinna, their favourite. It's always a fun time hand feeding these fish, very very tame. I make a slow descent, creeping through the kelp beds here. There's a nice little ledge, I've seen a few smaller snapper out in the distance. There's always a chance of a big snapper just parked up underneath here. I take my time searching around, but not to be. A little wrasse comes in for a look. Nice clean blue water, but the current stopped pushing. There's not much going on, so it's back to the crayfish. I find some awesome caves, no craze inside unfortunately, but an awesome swim through. I love going through these, good fun. Again, endless wrasses coming to say hello. Very cool little spot. I spot a nice crack running down this ledge from the surface, so dive down thinking surely there's got to be a crayfish in here. A really good little spot make my way down to the bottom of the crack here then work my way up some nice little holes in here nothing in the first one and then in the second I spot a few slipper lobster you can just see his head there don't muck around get my hands in there and pluck them off easy pickings these guys it's only the second one I've ever got in New Zealand awesome Snipper lobster. Woohoo! I've only ever found one of these before. Beautiful eating. Cool. Woohoo! Well, guys, here's the uh Slipper lobster, which I just got. I think they also call them the Morton Bay bug or something similar. Very cool. Prehistoric looking thing. Pretty ugly if I must say. But um, I have had one before. Just one and they are tasty. They got a good nice nice fat tail on them. This is a good size good size one. Pretty happy with that. There you go, Warden Bay Bug, Slip Lobster. Well, I had a good hunt around for craze and basically every boulder and rock, um, and it just, yeah, just wasn't happening. Some awesome looking terrain, but just no, um, no crayfish. So I'm gonna pull up anchor. I'm gonna have a snack and some water, um, recharge a bit, and. Yeah, I'm going to go to this rock where I have shot a good kingfish in the past, last time I was here. 
and um, if it's not firing there then no ideas probably just spend another hour or two um, cruising around some spots and then we're going to call it for today but let's go um, let's go check that spot hopefully there's some kingies around Righto, I've just uh, anchored up right next to this reef here. Last time I was here, shot a 20 kilo kingfish, 21 kilo, so yeah, it looks like there's uh, a few fish on the surface and stuff working around, so yeah, just uh, make sure this anchor's holding and we'll jump in and have a look. Well, that rock was as dead as anything, so I've moved spots. I'm on another point here, and I've just had a, I've just poked my head under, and there seems to be quite a, quite a few bait fish here. So, best kind of um, looking ground I've seen so far for kingy. So, we'll jump in and see what we can find. Jumping in, it was fairly fishy, lots of small bait fish, nothing too big, a few kahawai, and then a lone kingfish comes cruising through the depths here. It's not a big kingy, so I just let it go. Alright guys, uh, yeah, just not too much going on there. A couple of small kingfish came in, as you might have seen, but um, yeah, it's just not happening. So I think I can see a work up in the distance here, out on the water. So um, I'll jump in on that. If not, yeah, I'm just going to slowly make my way back to uh, back to base. Seems to be one of those days, but hey, can't complain. I've got a nice scorpion fish and a slipper lobster. So and I'm diving in beautiful conditions, and I'm out on the water. So it's all good. Anyways, we'll carry on. Well, I've jumped in a few times. Don't know if you can hear that. The surface is just alive around me. Heaps of koheru underneath and then kawai on top. No sign of kingies. It's just quite a vast spread out of um, bait fish, unfortunately. If it was a bit more tight grouped, I might have a chance of, you know, honing in on some kingies. They're definitely down there somewhere, I'm sure. Um, but it's a very vast area, so always good to see. Um, but hey, I'm gonna scope out this uh, big island here, somewhere I haven't been before, and uh, yeah, once again, we'll just nudge in closer. There's a few snapper in the distance, milling around, 
try to bring them in closer, rustling a few rocks, making some noise, tucking down into the weeds, but no, no luck there. I gave up at the spot and was just swimming back to the boat when I got swarmed by a big school of juvenile kohiru below and then in came swimming an almaka jack, same family as the amber jack, very rare here in New Zealand, just often seen at the end of summer in the far north of New Zealand. I knew what it was, lined it up and took the shot, I was stoked, new species for me. Apologies for the bad footage, the GoPro was stuck in a certain setting, but here it is, my first Almaco Jack, pretty cool. I didn't think too much about it at the time, gutting the fish to make sure it was in top eating quality, but later weighing this fish, it was the same equal weight as the New Zealand record for this fish, uh, so yeah, if I had left those guts in I would have had a New Zealand record, but that's all cool. Not really into chasing records. Oh, well that was interesting, pretty barren uh, little spot, a um, couple of smaller snapper and then just at the end got swarmed by this little school of baby uh, Gohedu and this guy, this guy shows up, um, looks to be a Almaco Jack I believe, um, very very similar to an Amber Jack. Um, one of my first fish I've ever I ever shot was a an amberjack over in um, Saint Helena Island, just south of the Ascensions. But um, yeah, pretty cool. It's got that uh, bold stripe up by the head. It's kind of gone now that he's he's dead. But um, yeah, wicked. I'm pretty stoked. It's a new species for me. So woohoo! Get him on ice. Look, I'm um, yeah, pretty buggered. I'm gonna. Um, cruise back back to base um, stay around we're gonna fill it up that scorpion fish show you how to do that and I've had a lot of people asking about that so we'll, we'll do one of those for you and uh, a bit of other filleting and whatnot might cook up some fish for lunch um, so yeah stay tuned stick around beach get all the scare put away get on the road and uh, I'll join you soon for a bit of a fillet session all right righto we're back uh, back home well I'm at my mate's house and we're we're gonna fill it up these fish they had quite a few asked before how to fillet a scorpion fish um, as they've got these poisonous spikes um, all through them so there's really not too much to it you just be careful and fillet it as normal but I'll, I'll show you quickly Okay, so we're just going to come in behind this gill plate here, as with a normal fish. Get that diagonal cut. I have gutted this fish, so we can just come right down. As with all my fish, I try to fill it, uh, gut them out on the water. There's less mess when cleaning up. There we go, we've got our two cuts. Again, down here. I'm no fish filleting expert, but there's really not too much, 
to these guys just have a nice sharp knife I use victory knives awesome and we're just gonna work our way down like a normal fillet and as you can see as we start to peel this peel this fillet off that is just beautiful white flesh they're top eating top eating fish so a lot of people catch these and, and throw them back not knowing what they are but we'll just it's got a few tough little bits there but there you go got a real thick chunky white fillet and they are just beautiful cooked up do the same on the other side just keep tickling up this knife as we go it's the key to keeping your knife nice and sharp just keep doing tickling as you go down that spine it's going to be different if you want to cook the fish whole perhaps you want to take some of the poison spines off but this is easy enough See, butcher that. Lost a bit off that tail, but other than that, there's not too much on here. If you've got a really big scorpion, you can get a bit off the cheeks. But there you go, two beautiful, nice fillets. Cook it up however you please. Well, here's the Almaco Jack I've decided it is from today. Um, I did gut it out there. Unfortunately, I believe this would have been a New Zealand spearfishing record. We'll just double check. 1.9 kilos and the record is 1.9 kilos. So with the guts in, it would have been a record. <laughs> Anyways, I don't, I don't care too much. Next up was the Almaco Jack. Quite easy to get the fillets off. Again, just like any fish, down the spine off the rib cage and off it comes quite a nice looking flesh very similar to kingfish right here's the biggest snapper i got from yesterday um beautiful fish not sure how long it'd be about maybe about 80 it's quite a long fish he's all gutted he was quite fat we'll um quickly weigh him so 16 and a half 17 and a half pound um, all gutted, so maybe 18 and a half, 19 pounds, so nice fish. Right, we're on to the John Dory. Got kind of weird fillets that kind of separate apart, but they are just the same as any other fish. Down there next to the gut cavity. Oh. There you go, beautiful fillets. Oh, got some tasty row as well. Right guys, we'll just finish up the uh, filleting. Anyways, hope you uh, enjoyed those two episodes. Um, some awesome action up in Northland, New Zealand. If you haven't dived up there before, get up there, it's, it's magic. Um, yeah, if you uh, like that video, thumbs up, subscribe means a lot. And uh, check out the description below. I'll leave the link in for my Primal Pursuit merch. If you wanna check that out, uh, support my channel. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. <laughs>